A few weeks ago, I played through and reviewed Super Mario RPG The Legend of the Seven Stars for the Super Nintendo, which I will link at the end of this video. In that review, I made a few criticisms. It's a perfect kids beginner turn-based RPG. It's a perfect gateway into some of the more challenging Dragon Quest and Final Fantasy games. And while it has an amusing story and the action combat system is a lot of fun, it's deliberately kept on the easy side oftentimes to make it accessible to beginners. And while it was my gateway when I was in high school to JRPGs, as an adult who has played a lot of JRPGs, there wasn't much to really sink my teeth into now coming back to it. On top of that, the pre-rendered characters, which were impressive 25 years ago back on old school TV screens, kind of looked like pixelated vomit on my new 4K widescreen TV. Now Super Mario RPG is being brought back by RK Piazza, and forgive me if I screwed up the name of that studio. If you don't know who they are, then I gotta ask if you played any of the Dragon Quest remakes for the DS and 3DS. If you have, thank these guys. So Mario RPG is in good hands, so how did they do? Well, let's find out. Before we begin, my name's Tommy the Game Master. If you like this video, please subscribe to this channel. The story is the same for the most part. Bowser kidnaps Princess Peach while she's visiting Mario's house. Mario immediately sets out to rescue her. After defeating Bowser again though, a giant sword breaks through the sky and plunges into Bowser's keep, causing Mario to sail clear back to his house. Mario quickly picks himself up and heads back to Bowser's castle, only to have the sword tell him that the castle belongs to the Smithy Gang, and the sword then quickly destroys the bridge. Now Mario must explore the world and find a way back into Bowser's castle to rescue Princess Peach. Or does he? The story gets more complicated as he comes across a cast of kooky characters, starting with Molo, a puffball that can control the weather but thinks he's a tadpole, Gino, a living puppet, and Bowser, who is now homeless, also joins his crew to stop Smithy, and he also saves Peach from her latest capture, a man-child called Booster. For the most part, the story is 95% the same, with some updated name changes. Toadstool is now Peach, for example. Bowser refers to his troops as his minions, which is the modern-day translation. Still, I kind of enjoyed the Koopa Troop just a bit more. Some monsters like Mac are now changed to Clay Borden, which is a better and more obvious name for him. The only reason why I can think of why they would call this guy Mac in the original is a reference to a very old, obscure song called Mac the Knife, which you're either A, way too old to have been playing the original Mario RPG to have heard that song, or you know the history of the failed McDonald's mascot called Mac Tonight. Most of the time, the names were changed and it's for the better. The only one I had the problem which I thought was a step back was Frog Fuchs, whose name was changed to the very generic Frog Sage. Beyond that, the story is either the same or improved on some levels. There's even extra scenes like this one between Peach and Bowser talking about how evil Smithy is trying to kidnap a whole town. The only thing they cut is a tiny scene after you get Peach in your party that showed Mario racing from Mary Moore back to the Mushroom Kingdom. In the remake, it just transitions back to the Mushroom Kingdom after you save her. Overall, the story is improved. My only real complaint again is the Frog Fuchsia's change. Most of the changes in the story are small things and what I would be talking about would be nitpicks. I enjoyed it as much as the SNES version and I think it should be checked out. Even if you have played through the old one, there's some new laughs to be had. Like the original game, this game is, for the most part, meant to be for kids to figure out how to play JRPGs. This is Junior's first RPG, but that does not mean older, more experienced JRPG players can't play it and enjoy it too. Just don't expect to have anything too tough beyond the basics. For the most part, I'll get into some of the new post-game stuff in a little bit. Anyways, let's talk about the combat first. Like the original, you do have to time your attacks for extra damage, and again, this doubles your attacks and makes battles a breeze, 
once you mastered it. With that said, what Arte Piazza did was to make the battles a lot faster and change a lot of the timing of the monsters, meaning that it's more challenging to get these bonuses from before. But on the flip side, 100% nailing the timing not only gets you bigger damage, but also damages all enemies. On the defense side, if you nail the timing, you can even negate a massive chunk of it now. I like this. It takes more work to get these bonuses and keep combos going, Still, there is a reward for mastering the new combo. Not only is the extra damage, but also the combo chain and bar rewards. Combo chains give you special stat boosts depending on who's in your party. Bowser gives you extra defense, Peach gives you magic defense, Dino increases your speed, and so on. The higher the combo, the bigger the buffs. On top of that, there is now a unique move gauge that can trigger when the bar fills up to 100% which can lead to some exciting attacks and strategy changes. You can now change your characters in mid-battle, once which they have to stay there for a turn or two, but it let me think of better strategies and found out just how much more useful Molo can be when I can call up on him for a turn or two and then swap him back for either Peach or Bowser. The items have been redone. You can now hold a certain amount of items before they're returned to an item storage in Mario's pad. So after 10 mushrooms, 5 pick-me-ups, etc., the remaining goes to Mario's house. I like this. It means picking up rock candy or other items doesn't mean I must now drop a healing item like in the original. I may be only able to carry 3 rock candy, but that's fine. I mean, I can still have those healing items. And if you know how to play, 10 regular mushrooms and some mid-mushrooms should be fine to go through any dungeons. Nothing's changed when it comes to going through any of the dungeons or the mini games themselves. They're all basically like they were in the original. However, you can now exit a dungeon at any time using a map feature, which does cut time getting in and out of dungeons, and I love that new feature. So, where did they make it harder? Well, after you beat Smithy, the post game opens up, and after running through Star Hill, and talking to Frofucius, the post-game battles open up, and these are hard. They're more puzzle-oriented, so you can't just level past them. They start easy with the rematch with Bellamy here, where you can hit him with thunder, and you have to knock down the clubs before you can do any damage. But when you get to Booster, then the attacks go way up. You can knock down all three characters at once, and it gets complicated trying to figure out how to stop him and his sniffets. I never made it through all of these extra bosses because I couldn't get over the fight with Johnny, which is a one-on-one -on -one with just him and Mario, no healing items, so you really have to know how to master those defense moves, and I'm just not quite there yet. Overall, though, it's a great addition to the game. One more nitpick I have about this game is that the original game had four save slots, this only has three save slots. I don't know why they got rid of a save slot. Just wanting to let you know that is kind of an issue. That said, it does have an auto save option that does not get in the way of those three save slots. The graphics in this game mirrors the Super Nintendo almost to a T. Unlike the Super Nintendo though, which was just mimicking the 3D characters and designs using some fancy pre-render effects, don't get me wrong, it was an achievement at the time, but again, looks like pixelated vomit now. This uses actual 3D high definition characters. The camera stays at the same level. There are more details to the environment now than the SNES could do, making it look striking and beautiful. There are even background details and vista shots. For example, in Moville, you'll see the mountains in the background, which looks gorgeous. The whole presentation has been updated and overall looks great. For example, leveling up has more of a pizzazz as the characters go on stage and do a little dance while you select the stat upgrades. It just looks good and adds to the fun. There are more cutscenes where the camera does take a different position to add more oomph to the story. But overall, the graphics exceed my expectation. They're faithful to the original while giving them a much needed upgrade. They did not change the experience, 
they just improved upon it, which is what a great remake should do. Until recently, I didn't know the person who composed Mario RPG was Yoko Shimomura. She's done a lot of work, but her two big claims to fame are the music in Street Fighter 2 and the Kingdom Hearts series, especially the latter. But I shouldn't be surprised, again, the music in this game does a great job rearranging classic Mario game music, plus giving fantasy RPG to the bouncy Mario feeling, it just overall feels excellent. Again, Arte Piazza did a great job remixing and remastering. Still, the original versions are there if you wish to listen to them. As far as voice acting, with one exception, they did not add any to the game. This includes Mario's usual grunts and wahoos that you hear in modern games. The only time where voice acting is added is with Bowser. There are times when he laughs, and in the original it was just a sound effect. They now have his voice actor doing those laughs. Which is an overall improvement. It sticks to the original when it comes to the voice acting, but where they did add it with the Bowser laugh, I think adds a lot more to the effect. So overall, well done with the sound Nintendo. So, the big question you're asking me, is this game worth $60? Kind of. If you don't have Super Mario RPG in your collection, or if you haven't tried it, the answer is hell yes, it's worth $60. This is an amazingly charming JRPG. It's easy and simple, it gets trickier, though if you already have the Super Nintendo version, or an SNES Mini, or a console with a virtual console service on it that you purchase Super Mario RPG. Again, one of my complaints with Nintendo is that they prefer to keep the game prices at $60, and with the new digital future ahead of us, a server in a data center can take up less space than games on a store shelf. They don't ever have to drop the price because they're not competing for game store shelf space. So this game will always be $60, is it worth it then if you already have it? Well, you heard me review it. It does have some upgrades, a post game that ramps up the difficulty in some clever ways, a really significant change to the presentation, and some pretty decent story additions except for the Frog Sage name change. No, that character will always be Frog Fuchsia to me. If that sounds like $60 or half of a Nintendo voucher, then yes, pick it up. If not, then enjoy your classic in all its pixelated glory. Meanwhile, I am glad I did pick up this remake. I enjoyed playing through this classic again in a new way. I love the new coat of paint. Anyways, that's what I have to say when it comes to this game. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and click on the thumbnail to watch my review of the original Super Nintendo version and tell me what you think about this upgrade. You guys have a wonderful day.